have cows, you know, your cows go down, they crap in the stream. I figured this out on paper one time. Uh, if you believe Premium Standard Farms that the spill they had on Blackbird was only 40,000 gallons, on my 340 acres, I'd have to have 17,500 cows go down to the stream at the same time and crap and take a leak at exactly the same time in exactly the same spot to create 40,000 gallons of sewage. I don't have my cows that well coordinated. Farms, small, independent farms, smell some, but they haven't bothered us for the last 200 years in the state of Missouri. Um, farmers have been shoveling manure onto various places on their, their farms for years, and it hasn't caused any significant or real damage to Missouri streams or Missouri air. This is an entirely different operation. And if this niche is one that is exempt from the responsibilities of other areas of citizenry, then it is, would be the first major step backwards in the environment that we've seen in the last 25 years and could, I think, embolden other types of industries who are not overly sensitive to the environment to trying to take the same jobs over environment paradigm to withdraw their regulation and their necessary processes to control what they're doing. It's amazing when these big hog operations are coming in, they say, okay, we have the capital, we can have the technology, we have access to the knowledge of how we can really control and manage the waste from a hog operation, much so, more so than a family farming operation. But I think history has proven that, that time after time we see incidences where either intentionally or through accidents uh, these lagoons spill. Over the last 15 month period we've had 19 spills, totaling over a quarter million gallons of hog waste. I mean one of these was caused because the uh, hay crew cut through an irrigation line in a field or a uh, waste application crew forgot to hook up the hose before they turned the, the pumps on. I mean, one of these spills was over 200,000 gallons, almost 220,000 gallons, and it backed up into a building, endangered the hogs, flooded out the fans of the building, got caught in secondary containment this time, but several of these spills were off, off PSF's property, got onto neighboring land. One of them got into the state of Iowa, up on the Somerset facility on the state line, so these were not small incidents. Point two. They're supposed to get a little excited. My scales only go to 3.3, .3, and yet 0.2, and we're clear over that. That's what they're putting in the water. That's what turns the, takes the oxygen out of the water. And if you'll check just about anywhere that PSS been, phosphate is high. Heavy metals is probably the thing that concerns me the most of all the types of pollution that I've seen come from these hog farms. Heavy metals don't digest in their food. They basically go right out into the feces, which is then eventually sprayed onto the land during the land application, or in the case of the spill last December here in Lincoln Township, goes directly to the waters of the state. When uh, the DNR came up and measured during that spill, the level of manganese, which is one of these heavy metals, was 170 times the EPA standard for safe and acceptable. They tracked that slug of, of manganese, uh, copper, and nickel downstream for 20 miles. It's the concentration of waste that poses the problem. I don't know what the people that communicate it the best are the people that live it. It's the people that, that came into our office and, and tell their stories and, and say, what can we do? We're sick. This makes us sick. We don't feel good. We've, we throw up in our backyard. I was told that inside of a half a mile, yeah, you, you may get a pretty good smell once in a while. A, a mile, you might get a whiff every once in a while. But past a mile, You've got a vivid imagination. Well, one thing about it, the more you talk to people around you, you find out you all got a vivid imagination and you're imagining it at the same time. What if there's more of it? What if we go of a, a county with a population of 30 to 40,000 hogs to a county with a population of a half a million hogs in a period of a, a few years? And some people might think that's unrealistic, but it's happened. It's happened north of us. We are already impacted by the pollution from 
from those facilities. What, what happens when, when, when that happens here? Are we not entitled, are the people of our county not entitled to some safe regulation? Our ordinance was not enacted to prohibit the production of, of any livestock, the production of hogs in Lynn County. It was to, to impose some regulation so that those facilities were also safe for the people who live by them. It's the gentle breeze from the south, straight you south. Can, you can come by the buildings there, you can just smell, it's the hog smell, which that wasn't so bad, it's the hog smell. Then you got right here, and you got that terrible burning smell. Then you got on down here, and you got the lagoon, what we're smelling right now, is that. You got three separate smells, all bad. <laughs> but you can figure what that is when the wind's in one direction, pushing it all towards you, what it is. It's, it's unbearable. Like your pilot light has gone out on your LP gas stove, plus a mixture of chicken feathers burning in it. 100 times worse than your pilot light on the stove. We live where our people are, you know. We're here, we know what's going on. And so if we have any tools given to us to, to protect the public from the impact of these facilities, then, you know, we're going to use them. Local control means that the townships, and actually Lincoln Township has found that it's, there's not as much room in it as it thought, but the counties, the counties of the state, have the ability to regulate beyond, beyond the regulations associated with state law. We are one of six counties that have enacted CAFO health ordinances. And we had heard rumblings prior to our lawsuit that there was going to be a challenge to that authority. And um, shortly thereafter, you know, we were served. Of the six counties that have health ordinances, we probably are the smallest with the least amount of funds. Of course, firms don't want this. Firms want the widest geographic area with the same level of regulation, so they can plan. They can plan systematically their expansion. We're not sure who all is um, paying for the lawsuit against our county. We understand there are many involved. This is one of the more preeminent challenges we have seen over the last five or six years because they have found a niche in our laws where they are stunningly unregulated and they are trying to drive that through their economic agenda. Uh, this is a country in which we have spent hundreds and hundreds of billions of dollars treating wastewater uh, to make sure that our streams uh, are fishable and canoeable and our water is drinkable. And we should not take a pass on the clean water progress we've made in this country over the last 40 years uh, by uh, just because of uh, this section of, uh, of big agriculture. Another issue that most people don't talk about is the animals themselves. You know, everybody kind of, when they <laughs> get a, a pork sandwich, uh, nobody really thinks about that this was a living animal that, in a way, is sacrificing its life for for mankind. I just enjoyed them. I, I guess I always have all my life. I, they're smart. And if you keep them in a good place out on the pasture, why, they're not what you call dirty. A pig can only sweat through the end of his nose. I don't know how many square inches that is, but it's not very many square inches for an animal that's got several hundred square inches of, of surface area and very little protection.